united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, everyone in El Paso, Las Cruces, and those that are watching us online. Welcome to United with Christ. My name is uh, Dave Janelle. I am from today's Christian Church. Unfortunately, today my wife won't be able to be with me. But uh, to give you a little bit of information, um, my church, today's Christian Church, is located at 11436 Rojas Drive, behind the Home Depot area in the east side of El Paso. We have services on Friday at 7 p.m. We also have service on Sunday. We have class at 9 o'clock in the morning, and then right after that, around about 10.30, we have um, our main service, which starts here. More than uh, welcome to join us this uh, coming weekend. I also want to give thanks to KSCE, Yolanda, and Grace for giving me this opportunity to be here today with you guys, sharing the gospel and spreading the news of God. I also want to thank and say hello to my pastors, Njorka Marin and Roberto Ruiz. Hello out there, and God bless you guys. I know God is going to do amazing things in today's program, an amazing thing that God has for us uh, today. If you need to call me after the program, my phone number is 570-977-9584, and my pastor's phone number is 787-533-5511. Feel free to call us if you uh, want to talk to us, okay? Just to recap uh, last week's program, we have been talking about what is consecration, what does consecration mean, and my favorite definition of consecration that I found was this one. It says, to separate yourself from the things that are unclean and anything that will contaminate you with your relationship with a perfect God. So we're asking today, what is contaminating your relationship with a perfect God? What are the things that are unclean in your life? And we, we have this question today because God made a promise to us. And we could challenge God on this promise, this promise that he made to us. It says in Joshua 3, 5, it says, Consecrate yourself for tomorrow. God will do amazing things among you. Again, I'm going to repeat this. It says, Consecrate yourself today for God will do amazing and wonderful things among you tomorrow. What does that mean? That each day that I consecrate myself, is the, I give the ability of God to do amazing things in my life. The ability to be able to walk with God on a daily basis. The ability to hear God's voice. The ability to get closer to God each and every single day. The ability to see how God does things and does works in my life. Because why? Because I have consecrated myself. This is a daily thing that God is calling us to do. Okay. He also told us last week that we have to be strong, we have to be courageous. Why? Because he's always with us. So we can't be over there complaining and doing this and doing that. No, you know what? The Lord is with me. I'm just going to go and do what he has called me to do because he, he is always going to be with us. And he told me to be strong and courageous. Okay. He also told, told us last week to be um, careful to do according to his word. Okay. We should not apart. From, his, from the word of God, we need to be careful each and every single day to do according to what he has called us to do and what he wants us to do and walk in that in obedience to him. We also read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 that it talks about not to be unequally yoked. We have to be careful with those things that we allow in our lives and make sure that we are not unequally yoked. Why? Because everything around us, everything that surrounds us, the things that we allow in our lives influence us as people. Yes, we are called to save the world, but we have to be careful with those that we allow in our inner circle that we allow to influence us on a daily basis. We can't be unequally yoked. Why? Because, and God warns us because it's going to affect us. It's going to affect you as it's going to affect me. If each day, yes, I'm giving my life to the Lord, but then I go and I'm hanging around with those people that have nothing, that want nothing to do with the Lord, it's going to affect my spiritual life. And not only that, they're going to be saying things against that. Because why? They, they don't understand the things of God. Because they haven't given their lives to God. 
So they can't fully understand you as a Christian. Yet we are called to impact them on a daily basis and tell them about Christ and tell them what Christ is doing in our lives. But we have to be careful to not be unequally yoked every single day. We also talked about not serving two masters. It's also in the Second Corinthians chapter 6. And idolatry. What are we putting before God? What are the things that are we putting before God in our lives on a daily basis? Whether it's our job. I mean, it's great. It's great to go to work. I, I have a job. I go to work and everything else like that. But do I put God as a priority in, in my job, in my family, in, in the way I live my life at my house? What is my priority? What am I showing those people around us the priority of my life? Or do I have those things, you know, prior, um, as priority instead of God? Do I work, 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 work and have no time for God, no time for my family, no time for this? You know, are, are, are we... Are we idolizing that or, or, am I, or am I able to balance my life because God has called us to balance our life and put him as priority above all things? So what are we doing? And what are we idolizing? Are we putting other things before God? That's really the, 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 one of the main questions on consecration. Are we putting other things before God? Okay. And before we're going to get into the, uh, today's, what God has for us today, I'm just going to give everything that we're doing here to the Holy Spirit and, allow the, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Holy Spirit, we just come before you. We just ask that you just take control of this program, that you just take control of the word that you have for us today. We ask that you guide us, that you touch and open the hearts of the people, that you are the one who uh, reveals to us what God has and wants for his people today. We, Father God, we pray this in the name of Jesus. We pray all these things. Amen and amen. We're going to go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, if you want to follow me. I already have it here. I'm going to continue reading it. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is the true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will for our lives. Amen. Okay? Paul is urging us what? What, what, what does urgency mean? What, what, what does that mean in this verse here? He said what it means is that he is trying to persuade us in a serious way to do something. So what is he calling us to do? He's, he says, hey, I need you quickly to, to understand this and start doing this as soon as possible because there's an urgency for us Christians, for the church, to be doing this. And what's the urgency for us to do? Is to live a life that is sacrificial, right? So he says, I urge you, brother and sister, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as living sacrifice. That's the urgency. He wants us to offer our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And you, and you might be thinking, what, 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 what do you mean by as a living sacrifice? One is that when we come to Christ, we're living. God Christ gave us life. When we come to him, to his feet, we receive life. And I'm living because of Christ. He died for our sins. He died for who we are. And now we're not dead anymore, but we are living in Christ. And, what, and what's the sacrifice part of it? Well, the sacrifice part of it is that I have to sacrifice my flesh. I have to sacrifice my thoughts, my desires. And the things that Christ wants me to sacrifice, the things that his word says that, you know what, we can't be part of. We're not part of this world. All these fleshly desires, envy, hate, discord, orgies, all these things, I want you to leave. I want you to sacrifice all these things because I want you to live a life that's pleasing and holy unto God. And so we have to sacrifice our thoughts, our heart, our, our bodies, Everything who we are, we have to sacrifice it so that we can live for Christ. And that is what is called to be a living sacrifice. I devote my life in every area of my life, whether it comes to jobs, my, uh, our spouses, our marriage, our children, 
our ministries, that we take all those things and we devote it to God. Are there things in your life that you're not devoting to God? Because if not, we have to change that and we have to offer them as a living sacrifice unto God. We have to sacrifice all those and we have to evaluate ourselves and say, hey, what are these things that that God is not pleased in my life? What are these things that I'm giving other priorities to? What are these things that, that I'm doing because I desire, not really because that's something that God wants me to do? You know, and those are the things as, as we walk with Christ that we, we learn, but we have to constantly be thinking about that and constantly be thinking about being a living sacrifice. to Father God, today I want to be a living sacrifice. Teach me, guide me how to be this living sacrifice for you, Father God, so that way I could be somebody who is holy and pleasing to you. you know, I don't know how many of, of, of people want to be holy and pleasing to God, but I want to be holy and pleasing to God. I want God to accept who I am. And I want to be at the end of the day, I want to finish the race that he has called me to finish. Because this is a daily thing. This is a daily relationship with Christ. And are we living a daily relationship with Christ? Okay. And then it also says on the verse that this is our true and proper way of worship. How do we worship God? By giving him everything that we are to him. What's the proper way? Well, we have to get into the word of God so we can know how to properly have a life that's sacrificial to him. Properly live a living sacrifice each and every single day. We need to get into the word. We need to get into prayer. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide us so that we can do our true and proper way of worship. True meaning that this is a desire that comes from within me and that I truly want to do this. That I'm not doing this because, oh, well, I want the benefits of God. I'm not doing this because uh, other people are telling me to do this. I'm doing this truly because God wants me to do this. Because I want to truly seek after God each and every single day. And it says that we cannot be conformed to this world, but we have to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And the renewal of our minds means that we start to transform our thoughts to the thoughts of Christ. Where, what, what do we think on a daily basis? Where is our minds, um, our thoughts on a, on a daily basis? Is it towards Christ or is it to, towards other things? And God wants to help us so that way we can have our minds each and every single day focus on, on Christ. Focus on saving people focus on doing the mission that god has called us to do to go to the world and preach the gospel so that everyone could be saved so everyone could know who christ is you know but do do people at your job know who, who you are who christ is in you or do are we trying to hide all of this and not give god any position even in our thoughts on a daily basis you know, it's, and, it's, and we're not saying that, hey, it's, it's easy to say what I'm doing, but that's why he calls us to renew our minds daily, to, to get into prayer. And I know sometimes, oh, and I've got up this morning and I don't feel like praying, but if you're just obedient to God, it was going to help you each and every single day where, where you know what, your, your desire and everything that you want to do, when, as soon as you get up, is you just want to get up and pray. You just want to get up and get in the Word of God. And you just want to be like, God, what do you have for me today? I know you have amazing things, God, because I've been consecrating yourself, myself each and every single day, Father God. And I know you have something amazing for me today. But you know what? If you don't get into the Word, if you don't pray, God can't reveal to you because His revelation comes through His Word. What He has for you comes through His Word. And that's why we need to be able to read and everything else like that. How many times, I have, a, I have a good example, how many times do we, um, do we get upset at people? You know when you get upset at people, and this is going to be the, the, the honest truth, you know, and it's a thing that even to this day, you know, I struggle with myself because sometimes, you know, we, we're humans. We're, we, we get upset at people. We get upset at things we see and everything else like that. But when, 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 when you do that, it's because there's an area of your life that you need to work in, not the other person. Because we ought to love like Christ. And Christ doesn't signal us. Christ died on the cross for us. That's how much love he has for us. And you know what? If I'm bothered because somebody did something to me, I always look at myself and say, God, what, 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 what's going on? God, 
you know, it wasn't like this, you know, because of my, uh, my growth in Christ and, and how God has been teaching me. I got to this point where if something bothers me now, I'm like, God, wh what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to show me? What is it that I need to get rid of? Is there still bitterness? If there is hay, is there any generational curses? What, what is it in me that is bothering me about about this situation that it shouldn't be bothering me in, in anything? I want to show love to this person. I want to show your love to this person. How can I do that and, and, and do the things and, and not allow any situation for me to lose my joy, for me to lose my focus in God and everything else like that? But, you know, so when I get upset, I have to look at myself. I have to evaluate myself and think, God, what is it that you're trying to speak to me? God, is what is it that you want, want me to change? What is it that you want for my life? Because you know what? If we could do that, the way we treat other people would be different. The way we treat other people would be the way that God wants us to treat them with love and respect. That no matter what they do, I still love them. And what, what's going on in the situation, that it doesn't affect me because our fight is not against flesh and blood, but our fight is against the darkness, the, the spiritual realm, against the enemy, against principalities, against rulers of darkness. That's who our fight is really against. So why should I be upset at my brother? If anything, I should be encouraging and helping him and teaching him the word of God so he can, him and I can move forward. But, you know, it's so, it's so easy to get upset. It's so easy just to push the person aside. It's so easy to allow the enemy that avenue because, you know what, the enemy is only going to put something there. He can't force me to, to, to fail or fall. He's just going to put something in front of me and see if I, if I take that path, you know, and when we do that, that's one of the ways we can learn to renew our minds is by learning and teaching and, and understanding what God has in his word. Be like, okay, well, if that's not my fight, is not against fresh and blood. What do I need to do to change so I don't feel this way when this stuff happens? You know, then you start actually renewing your mind. You start evaluating who you are in Christ and, and, you, and, and not be able to allow those situations when it comes to get to to, to, to really bother you, to take away that joy th that Christ has from you. But you know what? It's not really the other person. If you get upset, you need to evaluate yourself. When I get upset, I have to evaluate myself. God, what is it you're talking about? Is there pride? Is there, uh, am I being e egotistic? Am I, uh, is there any hate towards this person? Is, it, is there jealousy? Is there bitterness? Is, is any of this stuff that's bothering me? What is it? And, you know, that's what God is wanting us to renew our minds so that we can have a mind of Christ. You know what? No matter what goes on, I just, I just love you. I care about you. I just want the best for you. You know, I had a friend of mine that he said he, he always would argue with the other person and that they will always be fighting. And, and, and you know what I told him? I said, don't fight with the other person. Just listen to them and throw a curveball in there. Just in the middle of the argument, just tell them that you love them. Uh, why well, I know why? Because it's going to just change the whole situation right there. The other person is not even going to know what to do anymore. But that's the love that God has for us, that he accepted us just exactly as we are. And we need to accept people as they are. Are we going to the next level? Yes, we're going to the next level. Yes, we're changing. We're moving. We're, we're continuing this path with Christ. And Christ is, and the Holy Spirit is guiding us and teaching us. And, we, and we, we, we're, coming, we're becoming closer to God. And, and we're moving and everything else like that. But you know what? When, when, when you do that and you throw that curveball, that, that, that whole other person changes. And they're going to be like, wow. You want to change the situation? Change how you react to the situation. Don't try to change the other person. Because the only person who changes here is the Holy Spirit. I can't change nobody in my, in, in the, in my church. I can't change nobody in my house. The only person who can do that is God and the Holy Spirit. But when you show the love of Christ, that love of Christ penetrates the heart of that person. And that love of Christ that's going through you, that's flowing through you, will change the other person. You can't change the other person. But think about that. Think of, and, and that's one way we can renew our minds is when we see situations and we ask God, hey, what can I do? If you don't live as a living sacrifice, then can, can, God can give you the gift of discernment, which is the last part of this verse that he's talking about. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, his good and pleasing will. And we, and we need to renew our minds. We need to live as a living sacrifice so that way we, we could be able to discern those things that God not wants us. Why are we going to be able to discern? Because that means his spirit lives in us. And if his spirit 
a God lives in us, that means we're able to discern and he's going to let us know what is not his will. What does he not want in our lives? What does he want us to change? Amen. Now we're going to go to Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 26. Okay. And that says, and he said to us, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's verse 23. Jesus says to deny ourselves. What does it mean to deny ourselves? What well, It means that we uh, deny the personal control that we have over ourselves. And we deny other things that we're allowing to control our lives. Because sometimes we're not the ones that actually control our lives. We let the, the situations and the, and the atmosphere and the things that are going around and around our lives dictate our lives, have control of our lives. But what Jesus says here, it says, deny yourself. Allow me to have control of your, of your life, and let me show you the things, the great and amazing things I have for you. Because that's part of consecration, is separating yourself from everything. When you deny everything, and you allow Christ to take complete control of it. And then it says to take up your cross. What, what does it mean to take up my cross? It means to make a commitment that will lead to rejection. Jesus Christ was rejected by his own people. That's why he landed on the cross. Because he was rejected by his own people. The pe his own people did not want him anymore. And sometimes we might be rejected. Sometimes I post things or I make comments on replies on people's things. And I, and I use the word of God itself and, and, and people don't like that. They, they, they say stuff against me. They wanted to reject what God is trying to tell them in their lives and trying to tell them on a daily basis. But I can't do anything about it because I love them so much and God loves them so much that he's telling them, hey, look, this is what my word of God says. You need to change. You need to be different. I, I love you, but you need to come back to me. And that's the love that God has for us. So we need to make a commitment. A commitment that will lead to rejection, rejection and even death. Because you know what? Christ was dealing, willing to die for us, but are we willing to die for Christ on a daily basis? Are we willing to give up everything that we have so that we could die for him? And that is a big question. Okay? Uh, verse 24, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will be saved. You know, and it's talking about here that for you're trying to save your life. You, you, you're trying to do it everything by the way you want to do it. And, and you're, you're, instead of relying on Christ, you, you could really lose your life. But you know what? If you live a life pers purposeful, seeking after Christ, then everything that you're doing will be for his sake. And if you do everything for his sake, you will not lose your life, but you will have eternal life in him. Verse 25, it says, For what profits a man to gain the whole world? You could gain everything in this world, but at the end of the day, you will lose it. What, what, do, what are we have in this world? What are we putting as priority in this world? At the end of the day, I want to go to heaven. What does it matter if I have a big mansion or not? What does it matter if I have a, an amazing car or not, well, or an amazing job or not, if, if it's not going to give me eternal life at the end of the day? If that's not what Christ wants for me. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But when we follow Christ, we will know and get to know what he, what he wants for us on a, on a daily basis. Okay? Verse 26, it says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words... Of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when it comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. What does that mean? That means, yeah. You know what? If you're denying Christ on your, in your life, if you're denying Christ and you're not showing the world that Christ lives in you, that means that the day that you go to heaven or that you think you're going to heaven, he's going to deny you. He says, I don't know you. Who, who is this person that's standing in front of me? You denied me. When, you're, when your friends came in the car, you would lower the radio because you were, you were ashamed of me. When, when your friends would come in the car, you go to work, you would change the, the radio station and listen to other stuff. Why? 
because you were ashamed of me. And, 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 and when those people are the people who should know that Christ lives in you, that he is there for you, you want to know why? Because God is not interested in us understanding him. Because, you know, we can't even fathom, you know, God himself and his completeness. So, you know, a lot of people are trying to understand who he is. You know, when God is not interested in us understanding him. He is more interested in us obeying him, trusting him, believing in him. When we do that, then we can occupy those areas of hell. The areas that hell is occupying. The areas that the enemy is occupying. You know what? We come and we take it back from him. Because we walk in the glory, we walk in the obedience, we, we're trusting and believing that where God is taking us, that no, no weapons forged against could come against us. So what does that mean? Those areas, the enemy can't even touch, can't even hold. Why? Because it's God's and our obedience to God that is opening the, the, the path, is opening the doors in our lives. And those areas that, that the enemy had, that he occupied, and maybe in our lives, in our family, in our ministries, and, and, and in the areas that God is telling us, guess what? He has to go. He has to go in the name of Jesus. He has to flee. Why? Because when I walk with God and when I consecrate myself, I walk with the glory of God and the glory of God goes with me everywhere. And you know what? Where the glory of God is, there can't be nothing else. Only his glory can be in that space. Only his glory can be in that area. And that's what God is challenging us today. Consecrate yourself for tomorrow I will do amazing things. And, and, and and I ask that you challenge God in this. Challenge God in what he's speaking to you in your heart today. Challenge him. Walk with the way God wants you to walk. Obey. Listen. Believe in what God is telling you. And see what God is doing for you. See where God is going to take you. See the amazing thing that he's going to do for you and your family so that you won't be lost. That you and your family will all be saved. That you and your family will go to heaven. That you and your family will be able to experience the glory of God. Because there's nothing better than the glory of God. Than for us to walk in the glory. For us to have the glory. For us to be able to speak and see God answer. Because there's a lot of people who speak and they don't see God answer. And we give thanks God for to God for this amazing program. I just want to let you know, my name is Dave Janelle from Today's Christian Church. We are located at 11436 Rojas Drive here in El Paso, Texas. If you want to call me, my phone number is 570-977-9584. Thank you for joining us. I hope you will join us for the next couple of programs because I know God has amazing word and amazing things for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.